morning. Okay, so we are on our way, our South Coast tour. We're going to go from Dover all the way west to Cornwall and, uh, and back again. Should take us about five days. And um, I'm going to cut out as much of the motorways as possible. So I'll see you in a bit. This is the QE2 bridge. turn off in a minute into the A2 to Canterbury. It's pretty there isn't it? That's the Thames Estuary. Tilbury Docks and that's London that way. I think the Thames flood barrier is down there somewhere as well. There we go, so that's the end of the M25 for this week. Until we go home. Now we're on the M2A2. Or the A2 to the M2. Right, so we've just gone down the, A the M2. We're just about to get on to the A2. going to Canterbury. We got into Dover and uh, we're just going down to the docks. Hopefully the sea will be on my left and uh, yeah we can have a look around. There's the sea. This is actually a ferry terminal. So we'll have a look. Wow. That's the um Check in down there. That's the White Cliffs of Dover. beach so there you go it's Dover look all these houses they all get to Look out at the ferries every day. It's pretty cool. Get a few pictures of this. It's a PO ferry right over there. Just leaving. Oh, there's one next to it, right behind it. Right, let's go look around. 
white cliffs of Dover ahead of me. It's good. <coughs> so now we're going to be off to Folkestone, a place called Samphire Ho. And I think it's a place that they basically listened out into the English Channel for noises during the war. It could have been other things. It might have even been before the war, I'm not sure. But uh, it's worth going to have a look at. Oh, my word. Going through a tunnel. Oh, it's cold. This is going down through the cliff. So we're at the bottom of the cliffs now. see why loads of people, loads of kings over the hundreds of years wanted to own this island with such massive defences like this. Right, we've got to go up here. This is pretty cool, just going through this tunnel. I think the trains go through this bit as well. There's a train down there. They go almost directly underneath. This time. This is a road going down to Folkestone. It's quite nice, twisty. It's going to be longer than this. So this is Folkestone. Most people experience Folkestone when they're using the Eurostar or Eurotunnel. So we're going to go to Hastings via the scenic route on the A259 I think we pretty much stay on that the whole way to uh, Southampton I think so this is uh, I'm on the A259 and this is Sandgate which is um, just ahead of Folkestone and we're on our way to Hastings it's very uh, atmospheric out there. Might even stop for a picture. In fact, let's stop for a picture. Oh, that's not good, is it? Left that open. So we're just approaching Dim Church uh, on our way to Hastings. It's taken me quite a long time to just get this far. Um, traffic's a bit slower than I thought which means I might have a late finish tonight I should get there before dark so it should be alright lots of people are out cycling I always find bizarre that people would come down here to 
just sit in the chalet. There was a man just sitting at the doorway of his chalet. I mean, yeah. There's a beach there. There's a beach just over this bridge. Probably not a very good one. But all the same. Why leave your perfectly good house to come to a perfect, you know, to come to another house that you pay for? I've got no gloves at the moment. It's a bit too warm. I'm driving slow. Keeping it safe. Very uh, touristy. Got the optimistic inflatable over there on the right. Beach balls. Dim Church would be so popular. What is that? I think it's this old Romney. So we're away from the marshes now. And we're going a bit more in inland. Doesn't seem to be much here though. scenic route through the lanes it's scenic to a point the point you can see over the hedge and it's really scenic glimpses of the nice rolling hills is really nice but hedges are just a little bit too high Realised there were so many cliffs. I thought it was all beach. It might not be, but I'm assuming that's Brighton. I think it's, it says. I think it's the marina. Oh yeah, there's all boats in there.
200 miles. So it's getting a bit late, but we've finally got to Worthing. So we're going to ride along the seafront and then get back onto it. about 30 miles from the hotel we just came out of Worthing which is quite a nice place I remember it being such a dump last time I went there but with all the fairground and amusements and the sun out it's actually quite a nice place much better than Brighton uh, if you ever want to go to a Victorian seaside town in the south coast of England then I recommend Worthing, not Brighton. So it's been a bit of a crazy first day on this tour. Uh, started out well. Uh, and found very early on the sun, the heat was getting into me quite a lot. And uh, found my concentration level and my decision making was uh, lacking. I was relying on my GPS but I don't actually think it was taking me everywhere I wanted to go. So I got to the point where I started to go where, the way I wanted to go and then forgetting that I wasn't using the GPS. So the GPS then started taking me the other ways and I went oh yeah I'll just go this way and I find myself double backing places. There's lots of bits that I have missed out. Uh, I'm finding myself just, just the idea of stopping and getting my camera out is a real ball ache. I just can't be asked. And so I had every intention of enjoying the ride, stopping, taking some photos. But the idea of just padlocking the bike up getting my helmet off and get my cameras out and spending you know 20 minutes 30 minutes maybe walking up and down a, a town I just just can't be asked so so tiring and it could be that doing 260 miles in the first day probably a stretch not sure what tomorrow is I bought some nice cafe racer mirrors but they don't fit properly and I've only just realised that while I'm on tour so that's a bit of a problem so I took one off which is fine but it is slightly dangerous I was going to go to um, I was going to go to uh, um, Eastbourne, but I went a nice little country road, and then I ended up being completely off off it. So I gave up on that. And then I was going to go to uh, Beachy Head, and uh, I couldn't be asked to go all the way back, so I carried on. 
I've actually been more worried about my batteries running out for the whole journey so I keep turning on and off but, uh, possibly each trip I'll buy another battery so I can last a bit longer been through some nice places though trying to get through as many seafronts as possible but the roads just oh, sorry the GPS isn't sending me through these these little B road fronts so I end up missing some of them so at the moment I'm on the A27 which is kind of a bypass of all of the south coast so it's a bit of a bugger really but uh, if I take I left at 10 o'clock this morning and it's now 7 o'clock I've been riding for 9 hours which is alright I don't mind it did go really quickly though it'd be interesting to see that guy's passed me these two guys have passed me probably about 4 times now yeah, nine hours riding, probably 30 miles an hour, I'd imagine, I'm averaging. I don't actually know where it all went wrong. I think it was uh, from Folkestone. Oh no, it went through Bronxy, no problem. Oh well, I can't remember. But this is a kind of catch-up now. I think I might regroup my plan uh, for tomorrow, I'll do that tonight. Do a slightly shorter run tomorrow. I'm not sure exactly uh, how I can make it any shorter, but I might be able to bypass a couple of places, not be so uh, optimistic about uh, doing almost 300 miles in a day. 11 minutes to go so this is Gosport finally got here two hundred and seventy miles in one day doing that again.